huge, y'all. Southern California. Well, 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 well. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this fine radio program, podcast, and video extravaganza known internationally as the world famous Smoking and Toasting. Hi, right Mom. About, thank, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's Cruz and uh, producer Adam here on the uh, microphones. And so let me just briefly explain that today's show will be a little different. My uh, partner, Ian, uh, is not with us today. He had a uh, death in the family, and he and his wife are attending the memorial services so there was just no way for him to pull this off but we couldn't like just take a week off because we had one of the coolest interviews ever scheduled today so mm-hmm. i thought you know what adam can be on the mic with me we brought in uh tom harris uh to uh, to be behind the boards and the wheels of steel today uh adam of course is our regular producer but has plenty of podcast experience because he and Tom, who's producing today, do the... Uh, d- Tom and Adam's Midnight Variety Hour. Right, exactly. And, Check it out. Uh, I- I'm not going to try to tell you that it's... Uh, I will tell you that it's a great show, but it has its low points as well. For example, <laughs> I was a recent guest. So, uh, you know, just they do, they do what they can. Some of their guests are great and very interesting. And then sometimes it's a slow week and they call me and go, can you come in? So uh, so I did. We had a lot of fun, though. I told uh, I told a few like, uh, you know, rock star stories from back in the radio days. And it was it was it was a fun show. So uh, anyway, welcome to uh, Smoking and Toasting show number 248. Because Ian isn't here. Um, uh, we're going to do a little bit shorter show today, but I sure didn't want to skip it because our guests that are joining us today are from a couple of different companies that recently teamed up on like what has to be the coolest project in beer of the past several years, and that is the ACDC beers that have come out as a collaboration between Calicraft Brewing and uh, the guys at Knucklebones. So, uh, guys, we have uh, we have representatives from both companies with us today. Thomas Vo, who is the brewmaster at Calicraft. Thomas, say hi. Hey, guys. There he is. And uh, Blaine Landberg, who's the founder of Calicraft Brewing. Hi, Blaine. Hey, what's up, everyone? All right, that's good. So we've got the Zoom set so it shifts when you guys talk. So this way people can kind of put the name to the face. And uh, Tony Simmerman is the founder and creative director at Knucklebones. Hi, Tony. Morning. Good morning. It's so great to have you guys here. So let's get to, let's get to the, uh, the collaboration first, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the beer itself. Um, Tony, did this start? At Knucklebones, or did the Calicraft people call you and say, hey, we got an idea? Well, it, it started at Knucklebones actually about coming up on 19 years ago. We, the company that one of the first people to focus on merchandising high end products to music to super fans. And you guys so, do a lot of like really high end collectibles and figurines uh, and, and all kinds of really. Like sort of like not like the stuff you find at Toys R Us, but the really, the really good collectible stuff for uh, no, for. We love, we love Toys R Us. We hope it comes back. But yeah, these aren't. <laughs> yeah. These are, these are fine arts collectibles, limited editions. So think you know the Franklin Mint meets rock and roll. That's kind of the it. way to think about it. I love it. So but yeah, that 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 idea happened 19 years ago in that. In that product category, there are plenty of things for TV, film, pop culture, uh, so tons of that kind of stuff. And we thought, well, you know, music super fans—they're just as passionate. It's a—it's a huge audience. Let's let's found a company and let's focus on music. So we're really a, a music merchandising company. So that that thinking, we started to look at the the beer category, and we would see beer collaborations with brands that would come and go and we kind of saw the same thing it was a little bit all over the place and nobody really focused on making things for you know music super fans so that was that was the idea and uh we we went out to some of the bands that we've worked with over the over the years and told them what we were thinking about and asked if they would trust us to try to make this happen and uh we we after having those conversations uh we're really good on the music, music merchandising side and the, the music super fan side. Uh, other than just loving beer, uh, we don't know anything about making beer, so we <laughs> needed a great 
brewing partner. And, well, well, uh, I just want to say that's what I think that you did right. And I haven't tasted the beers yet, so I'll, I'll reserve final judgment for, for, for <laughs> okay. when I do the tasting. But, uh, but I have, uh, I have uh, high hopes because the part of this that you did right is you didn't just take a beer that was already out there and kind of slap a celebrity's name on it. You went to an actually you know, respected craft brewer and said, guys, here's what we have in mind, and can you come up with something that will work for this? Am I getting that right? Yeah, and I don't think I don't think the band uh, and and the band approves everything that we do, you know, with 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 these kind of type of things. I think the band heard that you know we were serious about it. This was going to be a line, and we you know we're approaching you know a, a select few to start this. When the band heard you know heard how we were going to go about it, um, I think that was a, a key element that we were going to bring you know master brewers and this wasn't going to be a uh something we took lightly just to to slap a logo on a beer and right. it was going to be crafted and there's going to be themes for the beers that when you taste it you have, you you say oh of course this is <laughs> this is tnt this is what it should taste like <laughs> exactly yeah, it is really sad whenever you you find like your favorite band or your favorite person or whatever and they do a beer or something like that and then you try it and it sucks and you're like oh man i really wanted to like right. this I really, and then, exactly yeah. yeah if if you loved you know uh conor mcgregor Right, and <laughs> yeah. then you tasted that whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah boy, that, that that was that that wasn't good. You know, no, com- no comment on that whiskey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but but you, you know, that's exactly that's exactly like what Adam said. To his face, but no, yeah. no, Connor, Connor. If you had him on as a guest, you'd be really like, good. you'd be like, this is the greatest stuff. And then when he got off the air, you'd be like, email every single listener and tell him we just didn't have the balls right. to say that it wasn't good. Uh, no, you. You know, the the reality is though that um, uh, a company like Knucklebones, you've already got the respect of the artists and the bands that you've been working with, because you've done other things for them. you. I w- would assume you've done other things for ACDC prior to doing the beers. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we started working with ACDC in 2007. Okay. Uh, and and we did the first set of collectibles of Angus and, and Malcolm. Everything we do is a limited edition, so it you know it, it comes and goes, and you know then we we might revisit a band, and that's the case with ACDC. We we worked with them for three or four years, and then there was a a period we're working with with other bands, and uh, I guess about two years ago we we contacted them and said fans are really after us for some some new things. Would <laughs> uh, would you be interested in the original product line? Is the it's called rock icon so it's a realistic you know live moment of a music of a figure of a performer we had added a couple of product lines uh so we're inching toward you know what would be a new craft beer line so we added what was called 3d vinyl where we take a piece of album art and make make a 3d uh limited edition collectible out of it and then we had a third line called on tour so any uh, any stage prop that you might have seen from a, a tour, um, mm-hmm. we do in a limited edition collectible. So we did the ACDC Hell's Bell, and uh, for those about nice. the Rock Cannon, nice. And then, uh, like about, I guess about eight years ago, we started to see beers coming with with various brands uh, and a few in music, and it just struck me they would come and go. I never had a chance to to buy one. Um, there was no real real focus, so that that's what we decided. We're going to create a new product line. We're going to approach the people that we've already worked with and have some some trust with. And uh, when I went and uh, had the initial conversation with the Calicraft guys, I, I think they they nodded a lot. I was like, "Yeah, this is really great." I think when I left, they went, "Can you believe that guy? He's crazy." <laughs> uh, crazy sometimes is what it takes, though, you know. And really, yeah. if you think about it, I mean, ACDC could actually be the perfect band to have a beer because so many of their songs are about drinking to begin with. I mean, a lot of people yeah. don't even know that "Highway to Hell" is not a song about you know living a bad life and dying and 
going to a fiery eternity. Highway to Hell is about the the road they used to have to drive that was iced over to get to from where they were to their favorite bar in the middle of the winter. They called it the Highway to Hell, and that's what inspired that song. A lot of people don't even know that. I mean, these are guys who are serious about their drinking, and uh, you know they'll they'll get they'll get right to it. So an ACDC beer though is gonna have to live up to that kind of uh, you know to that kind of of scrutiny. And so when when they came to you guys, uh, Blaine, and said, you know, we want to do something, did you already have maybe things that were coming in the pipeline that you thought that would work perfectly for TNT or or for Power Up, or did you kind of go to the uh, drawing board and create these from scratch? No, I think you know, for us, uh, we've always focused on being unique and different within the adult alcohol beverage space. That's that's kind of the premise behind Calicraft. And so when Tony brought this up, first we said he's crazy and he's nuts, but <laughs> let's see where this goes. We then found out he's like insanely smart and can get all this stuff done. Uh, and so when we first heard about it, we looked at it and said, what a great opportunity to take an inspiration point and then craft and think around it. That's kind of how we typically create our beers. It's how we create our brands, how we create our products. And so... When we when we thought we we thought of ACDC, the first thing we wanted to do was say, hey, okay, do we go out here with Hell's Bell? Do we do we, how do we do this? Uh, and you know, with the collaboration with Tony and crew, you know, we came up with this this idea about starting with their original album and starting with their most recent album, and then working in towards all the hits towards the uh, middle yeah. the time, mm-hmm. so that. Now you're like, well, I can't believe they didn't do Hell's Bell. Well, guess what? It'll be coming. It's right? coming, yeah. <laughs> right? And so when you see, so when you think about how we crafted the product, specifically, like if you're looking at Power Up, which is their most recent beer, I mean, their most recent album, we, we took inspiration from kind of what has been going on in the modern beer world. So we call it a juicy IPA, mm-hmm. uh, which is like right in line with the hazy and kind of what's happened with that category. Right. Uh, so we took inspiration and said, this needs to be like this. Uh, it needs to be a more modern take on a beer. Uh, it, needs to, it needs to be expressive, kind of like of where the consumer is now. Uh, and then in addition to that, you know, we took it even further uh, in terms of how we constructed the beer, and then not even that, in terms of how uh, the can was designed, and then even to what the ABV is on the beer. Well, so yeah. I'll let Thomas talk about how that came together. Yeah, that came. that was brilliant. And let me just say that one of the things that you totally, totally got right, and this is before we taste the beer, although Adam's pouring now. So, uh, But one of the <laughs> things you totally got right was the can design. Both of these, when you look at them, it gives you great optimism about what you're going to drink yeah. because they're just they're perfectly done to – you know, to capture the style of what the band is about, and and they also look like there could be some good beer inside. You know, <laughs> uh, so but uh, but yeah, talk about the uh, the ABV on uh, Power Up. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, like like Blaine was saying, um, you know, at, at Calicraft, we've always liked to make our products hopefully with a point. You know, mm-hmm. I think uh, maybe alcohol is enough of a reason to drink, but uh, mm-hmm. we hope that maybe there's a story or there's some something we're trying to do that's just not about you know more more than beer, more than mm-hmm. more than just the drink. And so for these, like like Blaine was saying, being truly inspired by the music, right? Like, what what would that be? What if you could actually make music that not only had Angus Young on the cover and ACDC album covers, but actually was inspired by what someone might want to brew when right. they listen to the song, right? right, right. So I had right. these albums on repeat um, <laughs> when I was making these recipes uh, just to get that hammer in my head. So the Power Up, uh, which y'all are drinking now, and I'll do a pour while I'm talking, uh, the Power Up it takes kind of my ideas, like takes old school, you know, this classic rock band, maybe the most classic of the bands, mm-hmm. and shows that they can make a new school rock album, right? So this is still what ipa is it's still hoppy it's still in your face but it's a little more balanced a little easier to drink a little lower in abv you know it's kind of got that more modern juicy impression so we're Mm -hmm. using citra american citra and cascade and australian galaxy so it's truly like american rock and roll and this australian yeah yeah you know what what people thought was a punk band when they first came out (laughs) but no this is a hard rock band uh, coming together and making this new kind of 
hybrid style that, you know, uh, still you can drink a few of them. It still rocks hard, but it's still like something you can enjoy in a modern context. Well, it is very balanced. And I was going to say you almost took an old school approach to a very modern style of IPA because this doesn't uh, this doesn't go off in that extremely fruity uh, direction, although there are definitely some fruity notes. But it's got it's got almost a balance between that East Coast. Uh, hazy, juicy thing, and the West Coast, uh, uh, you know, more uh, hop forward IPA. Uh, but the balance is really what what makes it happen. What, what, what do you think, Adam? Yeah, I love the the hops. Like you get at the at the mid point, and then towards the end, you get a nice bitter finish. And uh, I mean, it just drinks great. I love it. It's definitely refreshing too. Yeah, it's it's definitely. It's definitely a beer that you instantly go, okay, yeah, this is a quality craft. 100%. I'm not drinking something that's just some sort of promotional thing. You know, this is a, this is a <laughs> real, this is a real, legitimately uh, great IPA. Uh, are these going to be uh, available uh, limited? I know a lot of the, a lot of the things that Knucklebones does are available only for a limited time. Are these ongoing or are they uh, limited or seasonal? So I'll, I'll end on this. So these are going to be out in the market. So these these are going to wander in the world. I mean, one <laughs> of the things that we bring, one of the things that we bring to the table is um, we work with one of the largest distribution networks in in the United States and in That's the world, uh, which is Reyes Beverage. Uh, and so, and we also have beers to, distributed in some of the largest grocery retails in the world. May it be Safeway, Whole Foods, Costco. That's uh, These places. So. We we always are going to start the first like the first limited release will start at the tap room. Uh, we do that for a multitude of reasons. Uh, most importantly, just to make sure that we get everything perfectly right before it goes out into the broader audience. Mm -hmm. uh, which Thomas as Thomas and I and, and and with Tony as well for that launch we did. Um, and then yeah, we we've, we've already got it sold into over now. It's going to shoot as of yesterday over 700 different outlets of grocery retail has authorized this. That's it's awesome. Going be, you know, it's going to be, uh, and then we just got confirmations also going into other parts of, uh, of California and Arizona. And as we build this up, you know, the idea is you start here and then you work it out because that's really authentic to craft. Uh, and you're going to, and so it, you're going to find this, each of these releases that we do, uh, we'll have a home on a retail shelf. And I could tell you, you know, I've, I'm, I'm 23 years in the beverage business. Uh, probably the most excited I've seen some of the buyers I've ever talked to get when they saw what we were doing, the concept behind mm -hmm. it, the, and, the, and, the, and, and kind of how everything came, came together. Well, what you've got going for you here is that you know people, if they see it at a grocery store or a Whole Foods or at their favorite beer shop, they, you know they're going to want to try it because of ACDC, and then once they try it and it's a good beer, that's something that they can drink on a regular basis, as opposed to the, yeah, I bought it once because I wanted to try the ACDC beer uh, vibe. You know what I mean? It's, yep. And that that's what I think is is beautiful about it. So this is hopefully something you guys can continue to provide and continue to make available for a long time. Uh, you yeah. know, I, I, I think it's great. Um, I, I wanted to ask, though, about the ABV, because on the power-up on the can... <laughs> It says that the ABV is 6.66%. Um, so is that kind of just for fun, or is it really accurately 6.66? Yeah. Yeah. It well, really I, is. I, I had to go to the crossroads, actually, and sell my soul to make sure it was exactly 6.66%. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, yeah, no, that, that's a little tongue-in-cheek. Uh, yeah. There is a legal ramifications, but there's yeah. no reason why you couldn't. We did shoot for that. Yeah, okay, you know, we did, we did. I did go to... Normally we just round to the hundred hundred pounds, right. but this did go down to the theoretical, you know, five pound like increment just to see if hopefully we can get around there. <laughs> well, you and you and a number of famous blues musicians' souls are there at the crossroads. I think if you uh, that's why the beer is so good. If you manage to pull this <laughs> off, so so that is that is great. Uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, TNT. Here you went 
with another IPA, this one a double, which makes sense for TNT. But one of the things I'm not familiar with is, is IPA kind of a sweet spot for Calicraft? Is that because uh, a lot of breweries kind of, even though they may do a broad range of, of, of beer styles, may have a, a thing that's sort of their, you know, their sweet spot, whether it's, you know, uh, porters or uh, lagers or IPAs or whatever it might be. Is that true for you guys or did is it more coincidental? How did these come to both be IPAs? Yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about the IPA thing, Thomas, if you can talk about TNT. So uh, what we know about, so within the, without a doubt, the largest, so if, if we're, we're a craft brewery, ACDC is partnering with a craft brewery knowing that- In California. That, yeah, in <laughs> California, in Northern California, mm-hmm. right? Where <laughs> Sierra Nevada started, right? Right. right. And so like, the most popular category within craft is IPA by far, mm-hmm. not even close. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we make a lot of IPAs. It's it's what we do, but we also know that the the consumer that is interested in trying something most uniquely is the IPA customer because they uh, IPA customer is in, in in of itself it's very kind of promiscuous in terms of how they drink. And so you're right. We're always trying that, new, new always IPAs. trying new yeah. things exactly. And so and we also know 16 ounce cans because they are of the collectible nature and trading nature is one of the, you know, other mm-hmm. than like sours from back in the day, you know, 16 ounce can IPAs, think about the Northeast hazy producers or mm-hmm. Southern California, wherever, like they're in, innately within kind of their being within craft, the, the new collectible. Right. And so you had a, you, you had the intersection of two key things, the most popular product within the craft beer consumer, right. With, mm-hmm. Which is IPA and a package and a concept that fits with trial as well as collectible. Hugely and so collectible. those two things made perfect sense to start. That that that's awesome. All right, TNT. What are we what are we looking at here? And and uh, why did why did this beer get chosen uh, for uh, the next ACDC beer? Yeah, and and kind of segueing off Blaine's last comment. You know, when when I describe IPA, I'm like big, bold, brash, in your face kind of works with the band. So right. that, that was the Absolutely, idea. It, yeah. does, it does also fit with who they are. Um, so a high, high voltage TNT double IPA, similar to kind of being focused on, you know, the most recent album. Let's, we want it to be inspired by, you know, the first North the American release. Albums, yeah. Uh, and to me, this, when this came out, if I put, I, you know, I'm, I, I wasn't lucky enough to be around when that came out, but if I was, I could try to put my head in that and be like, this was, big crazy totally different than anything else that existed before Mm -hmm. you know this album hitting the u.s market was that big of a deal so let why not do that with the same style that really kind of i think gave birth to you know this this craft beer movement we're in now which is especially for us in norcal double ipa right like big bold in your face um and so that was the goal make something that was a a a bigger you know 8.8.2 percent um really kind of old school and rippy bitter but also because we you know we wanted to kind of show the length of the the music and how the music has still resonated even through all this time it still sounds fresh yeah, when this- you listen to tnt you're like it still sounds like a modern song and so we kind of took a, a few tweaks to that made it a little uh more balanced uh, used more modern hops so it has galaxies in it uh and then simcoe so yeah. kind of the darling of the old school double IPA, the yeah. new school super popular hop, uh, and then made it into a more clear, drier style. Mm. Well, that's uh, terrific. It's delicious. That it, it really is terrific. Damn. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know if a lot of people remember this or not, uh, but when ACDC's first North American album was released, Rolling Stone called it a new low point for rock and roll. And uh, the the band has certainly yeah. had the last laugh on this. Yeah. And, uh, cool. and, of course, uh, of course... You know, here they are now with uh, with their own line of uh, their own line of beers. I would assume, um, Tony, that you had to send these beers to the guys in the band, send them to Australia so they could taste them before the thumbs up was given. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Everything that is done in an official capacity with ACDC is approved by the band, and they they look at everything. They're super super detailed, and they they choose their their partners 
carefully, I can assure you. Uh, that mm-hmm. it only makes sense because that you otherwise you're just whoring your brand out and and letting anybody that wants to right. pay you a dollar for it, uh, right. you know, put out inferior stuff. So it's it, I would I would think it's pretty important. But I would also figure that these guys are pretty good at knowing whether beer is good or not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know if they're beer well, drinkers? They, they know. Or, yes, or they, okay. they know. They know what they know what's good. I mean. ACDC, think about it, just off the top of your head, you know, a single act that could do a global stadium tour, not an arena tour, but just yeah. as themselves. How many bands can do that right now in any kind of music? You could count them on one hand in ACDC's first, you know? That's, they're, they're, they're definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Well, this beer, the the double IPA, uh, it, it is very big and bold, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how drinkable it is and our, our uh, thing is telling us we're running it's out so of time with, yeah yeah it is it's uh, it, it's really really fantastic can you take that notification off of there we use the cheap zoom account instead of the uh, instead of the uh, bigger one so <laughs> so it's giving us little messages but you no know, it, it's very drinkable i don't want to say the word crushable because i don't think you're <laughs> legally allowed to say that with a double ipa but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but it is really good so guys is this is this uh, kind of the experiment? This goes well. There will be more ACDC beers. I would, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I would think you know, that one one of the things that we I can tell you right now it's going it's gonna it's gonna go it's well. gonna go and, well yeah <laughs> yeah it's gonna go well. I mean, I've been I've been I've been in, I've been in beer for you for uh, over a decade, and I've been in beverage for over two decades. So you got to know when things when you got something that's gonna work. And what and, and what's working is us working with Tony as like just a kick-ass partner, uh, who like understands like where we want to go with it. He has a great vision in terms of what bands fit into this concept, and then how to kind of start, um, how to kind of start the process with the bands and where mm-hmm. we should start. And then we take that and get inspired by the liquids. And as long as we keep that and keep true to that, we keep true to like how we come up with the concepts of not just the not just the beers but also the bands and how we release them. Right. I think we're in for a really good ride for the next three years. Well, these beers definitely taste as good as ACDC sounds, so it's it's a yeah. perfect. Uh, and that's refreshing to hear them say that, you know, because I wish every you know celebrity slash product would be kind of that way, you know. It just it's it's just nice to hear. And this TNT has a really great mistake. Mistake. Or, uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but like a, a multi like backbone in it. Is it like did y'all choose that on purpose? Like, yeah, to, is it like balanced like that? So, well, I, that actually came directly from one of us. Uh, you know, when we were designing the beers, Tony told me a story about, you know, ACDC when they w- would have to play shows when they were first starting. They also had to make sure they got butts out of seats, so they actually got people dancing yeah. and rocking. Right? Like, it wasn't just about rock; it was about you know having fun and letting people cut loose and getting the move. Yeah. You know, I think when you see double IPA, you think big bowl in your face. But that doesn't mean you can have you can't have it balanced and something that's also, you know, crushable. Maybe I'm not allowed to say that, but you know, <laughs> super easy to drink, super uh, juicy. Yes. Uh, but still in this old school style, all right? So you're having like a modern style mixed with old school, then the old school style modernized. Nice. Well, so that's what we wanted to do is show that how timeless the music is and how the band is after all these years still cranking out new albums that are really. Uh, really hit to the core of what rock and roll is all about. Well, guys, just like we keep the ACDC albums in rotation, I'll be keeping these beers in rotation as soon as uh, okay. as soon as they're showing up. Uh, these will be, these will be in the beer fridge for sure, and we'll be looking forward to seeing what else you guys do. Uh, they're both very well balanced, uh, both really delicious. I'm kind of the IPA guy uh, here on the show, so I, I I can tell you these definitely make the cut for me. They're they're really really terrific, and we look forward to to more uh, ACDC beers in the future from you guys uh real quick uh let's let's get some uh web addresses for uh both the uh, brewing company and for knuckle bones uh go ahead give us the the, the calicraft yeah so you can find us at calicraft www.calicraft.com uh, on instagram at calicraft and on facebook at calicraft beer um, if you message any of those, I will be the guy responding. So awesome, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And for Knuckle Bones, uh, Tony, how do people find your site? And I'm going to assume your site. We can not only see the beers, but uh, we can see all the other cool collectibles you've got as well. Absolutely. So it's it's Knuckle like on your hand, K N U C K L 
B-O-N-Z, like zebra, knucklebones.com. Oh, and you can get it on all our socials from there. And you see what we're doing with ACDC. And uh, actually right behind me here, I'm already working on the next beer release. So so for me, that we, the beer gets set up and it's launched, you know, I immediately go on to the next one. So we've, we've got another launch that's coming this fall with the band I think you'll you'll know and agree that it's a perfect marriage of of brand and lifestyle and coolness and, and and some great beers and great themes. Well, definitely let's stay in touch and when those things uh, are getting ready to come out, let's make sure we get a chance to tell people about them here on the show. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much to all of you for uh, being on this with us today and uh, we'll uh, we'll do this again. Calicraft I'm a new fan. I'm going to be looking for, we do get a lot of California beers. We're based out of Houston, Texas. We do get a lot of California beers here. So I'm going to be on the lookout for you guys' stuff because I want to taste some more of what you've got. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, Thanks, good Sean. luck. Good luck with the rollout of uh, of these ACDC beers. They are terrific. Rock on, man. Rock on. Keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you to everybody for joining us for this abbreviated uh, version of Smoking and Toasting, number 248. We are uh, going to be back with you again next week. Ian will be back, and we'll be uh, bringing you a show that I think is going to be fairly interesting because Chris Soule, who's been on the show mm-hmm. with us before, uh, she was with uh, with uh, Dripping Spring. Uh, Deep uh, I'm sorry, with Deep, Deep Eddie Vodka. Eddie. Yeah. I got my vodkas confused. She was with Deep Eddie Vodka. She's now got her own company, represents a lot of different brands, does a lot of consulting for uh, beers and spirits and for bars, and she has teamed up with Old Forester, and mm. she will bring some Old Forester on Yum. the show next week. So uh, so we're looking forward to that. And then two weeks from today, we're going to be live at the Rainbow Lodge, where our smoking and toasting uh, wine expert, Mark Burrell, will be on hand. He always brings interesting guests and always pours fantastic fantastic wine so we'll be looking forward to that plus we'll be uh outside so we'll be able to smoke and talk cigars so it should be uh, a couple of great shows uh coming up for us in the very near future uh thanks again to Calicraft, thanks to knuckle bones and thank you guys for uh, being here with us uh smoking and toasting we are on our way uh, out and as we like to say a, oh, adam you gotta, gotta do another quick little pour <laughs> of that tnt gotta crush right. it cheers, as we y'all. like to say cheers y'all cheers y'all <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, y'all.